Hi, I'm Ben, and uh, I had a question on my uh, Magic the Gathering channel that uh, I thought I would actually address on a larger scope. Because um, what the user asked me um, about uh, had to do with a particular sort of uh, purchase that I had, that um, a hobby that I have um, called Magic the Gathering. And he asked me, when a set comes out, do, do you buy one box for a particular reason of each set? Or is it just kind of sort of a, you know... A personal tradition is this a personal choice is what reason do you have for only buying one box per set and uh, so I thought I'd talk about this on a larger scope because it kind of goes back to a philosophy that I have I'm a very philosophically minded person and I try to live my life by my my philosophies and um, this one happens to do with addiction um, the way that we kind of talk about addiction in a larger scope of society is very geared towards uh, chemical addiction, but it is my own personal belief, actually, that some people are naturally more uh, of a, have more addictive personalities, have more of a compulsive personality, and that really you can be addicted to anything. You know, whether it's like, you know, uh, pornography, gaming, sweets, junk food, uh, movies, the internet, um, you know, magic cards, uh, you know, drugs, alcohol. And definitely there is a there is a scope to this that makes chemical addiction a little bit more dangerous in the sense that you are chemically addicted. But that doesn't mean that you can't have other addictions. And it's sort of interesting that we sort of separate the two and we sort of, you know, talk about um, compulsive behavior as something very different from addiction when I actually think that, like, you know, most of what we have problems with in modern society on, on a materialistical level has to do with addiction. And so why do I only buy uh, one box of magic cards? And it's because although I think that there are people who are, you know, have... can more easily become addicted to certain things. I think that everybody is susceptible to, you know, one thing or another. Things that they're, like, passionate about, things that they care about. And uh, Magic the Gathering is, for me, one of those things. I don't consider myself a very addictive personality. Um, my, I guess my two big addictions would be the internet and magic. And one of the reasons that I buy one box is a personal choice. There's no... There's no particular reason as far as, you know, what cards you get inside. Um, you're going to get, like, a pretty random distribution and good distribution of cards, whether you buy one box or three boxes. So there's no reason like that in the sense that, you know, once you buy one box, oh, you get all the cards and then you don't need to buy any more. No, if you buy one box, you're going to you're gonna get a good distribution of cards, but you're also just going to be missing some cards, okay? So if you want to get the cards, you're going to have to buy more boxes. That's just how it goes. So there is no reason per se, but I would say that it is, for me, it's a way to personally um, sort of limit my intake and take a kind of a responsibility in the way that I, I make materialistic purge, purchases because, uh, you know, magic can become quite expensive. And if even if I buy one box per each set a year, that's around $400, which, you know, hobbies, it could be argued that spending $400 on a hobby per year is inexpensive. It could be, you know, it could be... Uh, could be seen as, you know, excessive because there are cheaper hobbies, you know. And especially, uh, you know, with these, you know, I, I made some additional purchases, which is these uh, five, uh, yeah, uh, commander decks, you know, which come about $30 a piece or whatever. And so that ran me an extra $150. And we have to remember here that I am a housewife, you know, I'm not actually making any of this money. I am actually uh, usurping this and, you know, parasitically using it, if you want to think of that as, if you think of how that's how housewives work, um, uh, from my, my girlfriend. And, you know, my future wife, fiance, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, so, like... Even if this was my own money, I would only, you know, buy one set per, per, one box per set. And this is a way to basically limit my intake, which I think on a larger scope 
would be probably more healthy for all of us. I think that I don't know why we don't think of addiction as being more widespread and rampant because I really think it is. I really think that like we should be addressing internet addiction. You know, I think that we should really be addressing like uh, pornography addiction, junk food addiction, sweet addiction. Like these are all just basically compulsive behaviors that if you don't really take any responsibility over can they can really mess up your life and especially you know we have this whole big drug war and like you know we have a very uh uh culture that's stigmaed against uh recreational drug use um because those things can be dangerous but if you look at the obesity obesity rates like here in the united states uh you start to kind of see that you know maybe recreational drug use probably shouldn't be our number one addiction concern you know uh, you know, just an idea to put out there and, and sort of the way that we, we think about um, basically what you intake into your life, you know, as far as being a consumer. Um, because really, I think probably the best place to be, obviously, is in a, as a producer, you know, if you, you know, produce anything, like, at least you're doing something. Uh, while as if you're consuming these things, uh, I think that any of them can be, be a very much addiction and sort of you know, run your life for you. And on an additional issue, on the, on the magic issue, if, if you uh, read up on any of the magic uh, articles at all, um, Mark Rosewater, who has been the lead designer for magic for several years, he has a very sort of philosophical approach to, to magic as well. And his, his main, he's written plenty of sort of comments on the idea that restrictiveness breeds creativity. If you only have a certain amount of tools, you're going to get start get to start getting creative about ways that you can work out solutions. And in magic, that's uh, how you're going to, you know, use the restrictive nature of what cards you have to basically build decks. And I have to say that like I don't since I don't have a play set of every card, I don't have every every magic card. I don't have like, you know, all the cards that I could possibly really in my heart of hearts have like four copies of every single magic card. That may be in my heart of hearts, but by buying a box, I get pretty close to fulfilling a lesser, uh, you know, dream, which is to have at least one of every magic card. Buying a box, every single set, pretty gets, gets you pretty close. And since you don't have that sort of uh, automatic includes into your deck, or, you know, if you want to go beyond that to a greater scope in your life, what are, you know, easy things to include in your life. If you don't have those things that you can just buy and just include into your life or in your magic deck automatically, you start getting creative about what you can do instead. Uh, you know, let's say you're going to go travel, for instance, and you don't have the money to have the travel of your dreams. What can you get? How can you be creative with your money to like really experience everything? And the same thing happens in Magic the Gathering where, you know, just like Mark Rosewater says, like I'm, I'm restricted in my card use and so my Magic the Gathering decks tend to be a little bit more creative. Um, now I do go out and buy singles occasionally to to get a deck to work, but it's very rare. I mean, well, I'm talking like, you know, my Contaminated Bond deck or my Battered uh, Golem deck. So, uh, and I'll, I'll link those cards down below so you can kind of see what kind of theme, theme I'm working with in my mind to try to make these cards work. Um, but yeah, I thought I would basically kind of talk about this a little bit inside and outside the scope of... Uh, Match the Gathering and why I only buy um, one box per set because it actually I think has a larger philosophical scope the way that I look at it and the way that I live my life and the way I would like to see society sort of approach consumerism in general so yeah I thought I would just kind of like put this out there and um, I'm going to go ahead and do this on my magic channel and on my, my hobby channel which usually is magic and uh my other channel as well that I'd like to get a little bit more social commentary on. So yeah, thank you for watching and uh, thanks for the question. It allowed me to sort of address this idea. So yeah, take care. Have fun.